Hello and welcome to the Domestic Cricket Podcast, where we discuss the latest news, big stories, player movements, fixtures, results, classic matches, and of course, interviews with domestic and international cricketers. So if you're a fan of the Sheffield Shield, One Day Cup, or a cricket fan in general, you'll love this podcast. I'm your co-host, Caleb Bland, along with Sam Fitzgibbon. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Domestic Cricket Podcast. It's episode 9 today and I'm your host, Caleb Bland. Joining me today is my younger brother and mad blues fan, Ethan. Yeah, good to be back on the podcast and got a lot of domestic cricket to discuss today. Yeah, obviously we've missed the past couple of weeks um, of the Domestic Cricket Podcast, but we've got a fair bit to catch up on and we're looking forward to catching up on it because there's been some great cricket played um, while we've been away. Uh, And we'll start at the Marsh Cup. Uh, We'll pick up from where we left off. uh, Match three, Western Australia took on South Australia in probably the game of the tournament so far, would you say, Ethan? Yeah. And Western Australia scored 369 at the Wacker in front of a decent crowd, um, which was a mammoth score and got it looked like a road that wicket. I know you were watching a bit of it there too with me, Ethan, and it's just runs galore out there, not much for the bowlers. Uh, Cameron Green and Sean Marsh, two of the form players in domestic cricket going around at the moment, uh, both hit centuries for WA. But South Australia, who have struggled in the One Day Cup in Sheffield Shield, not only this season, but the past few seasons, they put on a massive effort, uh, a massive show for the viewers at home. And they should have won it. You know, they got bowled out for 356. But they were really ahead in the game chasing it pretty much all the way through. And then they had a massive collapse, as they're known for. Um, Travis Head hit 142 and boy was he just smacking them all over the park it was probably the knock of the tournament in my opinion um had a massive collapse and what do you know they lost it uh and yeah look they they've they always find a way to lose these games don't they Ethan? you know they they came up against a very um strong one day western australia side although western australia were missing their 11 of potentially their best players. Uh, obviously, Sean Marsh and Cameron Green and probably Hilton Cartwright would make the best 11 anyway, but they were missing a fair few players through either injury or they were over in the T20 series in New Zealand. You know, they they South Australia's squad compared to Western Australia was a lot stronger and they showed that when they were batting. Um, obviously, their bowling was a bit lacklustre, but when they were batting, you know, they showed that they could give it to the rest of the guys um, the rest of the sides in the comp, and they just found a way to lose. Uh, they lost seven quick wickets there at the end and fell 13 runs short. Uh, the next game, match four, the first time Adelaide Overwood hosted a one-day cup match. It was a day-nighter as well uh, since 2011 or 2012, um, that summer. They took on New South Wales, who welcomed back David Warner, uh, and that was probably the biggest crowd we've had at the one-day cup. Um, so far this season, uh, they're probably expecting a few thousand, but they only really got up to maybe eight hundred to a thousand uh, for a Thursday night day night a match. Uh, South Australia batted poorly, were bowled out for two hundred and five, and New South Wales cruised to victory by six wickets. David Warner scoring about seventy odd at the top of the order, and the fifth match, Victoria took on Tasmania. Uh, both sides. Missing a couple players, um, either through injury or the tour to New Zealand. And it turned out to be a pretty low-scoring affair, but it was a great affair um, for my Tassie boys. Uh, we bowled Victoria out for 222, which on a pretty good St Kilda wicket, um, a bit slower, but you know it, there was nothing really um, stopping Victoria from going on to make 280, 290 there. Um, we bowled him out for 222, uh, you know, Tasmania, you think maybe maybe that is enough for them uh, to chase down any more, maybe would have been pushing it, uh, obviously missing Wade and McDermott, but, you know, they showed their class, uh, 225 for four, uh, they chased it down six wickets in hand. It was an all-round performance, Jordan Silk, 69 not out, Mack Wright, 66, uh, Jake Dorn, 34, and 36 to Tim Payne. They got off to a great start. And uh, Tom Andrews picked up three wickets with the ball. Um, and it was an all-round performance with the ball as well. Uh, everyone picking up 
two wickets each, basically. Uh, and, yeah, it was a great win for the, my Tigers, which we needed after losing uh, to Queensland in the first match, kept, kept our tournament alive. And then the sixth match, uh, we went up to the Gabba. Ethan, do you want to take us through this scorecard? Uh, Queensland Bulls are 9 for 264 after their 50 overs. And um, WA, is that bowled out? Yeah, I bowled out for 143. Uh, a weak WA side. Um, yeah, they uh, they bowled well. Uh, you know, the Gabba probably, you know, they probably should have been looking at 280, 290 Queensland there. Uh, but they kept them 264 for nine. Uh, but yeah, WA, uh, it was a wet affair as well. Um, there was a massive rain delay. But WA uh, had a Duckworth Lewis Stern target to get and they fell well short by 93 runs, bowled out for 143 and that uh, really um, damaged their chances of hosting the final, um, which meant that they needed to win the remainder of their games uh, to make the final after losing one match, much like the Tasmanians. And then we moved on to the seventh match and uh, look, as a Tasmanian supporter, it's very good reading, but I think not only for the South Australia supporters, but everyone in domestic cricket, you want South Australia who have been, well, it's fair to say they've been very, very poor the past few seasons. You want them to be competitive. The side they have should not be producing the score they did in this match. Bowled out for 104. And this is a Tasmanian side without Riley Meredith. Um... Look, it was it was quality bowling from the Tasmanians and great fielding. They were tight in the field, but 104 runs. I mean, seriously, what's your what was your opinion on it, Ethan? You were at school, obviously, but when you got home and read that scorecard, what what did, what, what was going through your head? I honestly felt like oh, I could do better, like as a <laughs> junior player. It was, uh, yeah. Look, they were lucky to get to triple digits, in my opinion. Um, yeah, they they were shocking for that. And then Tasmania, uh, Tim Payne made an important 50, a very good 50. Um, showed that, you know, he's he, he hasn't played white ball cricket in a while, um, but he's still got it. And uh, they were, the scores were in fact level. Uh, Tasmania were yet to lose a wicket. And then they, Tim Payne got out chipping uh, to mid on. Uh, and then the very next four, Jake Dorn came in at number three and hit a four, and Tasmania won by nine wickets. A massive victory, um, that re- a double bonus point victory, in fact. We haven't seen a double bonus point victory in quite some time, and oh, it was a massive victory. That Tasmania obviously lost their first match against Queensland, but this really put them in a great position to make that final, uh, bar and they don't lose anymore. And then uh, the latest match, uh, me, Ethan and Sam from the domestic cricketers ventured out to it, North Sydney Oval, New South Wales, a very strong New South Wales side taking on an extremely weak Western Australia side and the match was abandoned without a ball being bowled, which is unfortunate. But for the Western Australians, it's probably the best result they were going to get. I don't think they were going to win that one. Uh, They came away with a point and New South Wales uh, remain undefeated. And we take a look at the ladder. New South Wales, uh, three games, two wins, uh, and the no result puts them on 10 points. Tasmania, two wins and a loss, 10 points. Queensland, two wins, zero losses from their two matches, nine points. Western Australia, one win from three matches, pretty much rules them out of uh, the Shield, uh, the one day cup final, uh, barring a few bonus point victories in the last two matches. They're on five points. Uh, from one win, one loss, and a no result. Uh, Victoria uh, have lost their opening two matches, and I can't see them uh, making the final at all. And South Australia have already ruled out the final, um, finishing, uh, well, they've still got two matches to play, but they've lost their opening three matches. Now we're going to take a look at the Sheffield Shield. Um, since we have uh, made our episode 8 of the Domestic Group Podcast. There's been a few matches, uh, mostly drawn, but that's not to say they weren't good matches. Um, obviously, you don't want to see drawn Sheffield Shield matches 
but we saw some very exciting matches uh, in between, starting with New South Wales taking on Victoria. The match was meant to be played at the MCG, but due to a few COVID-related issues, it was moved to Bankstown Oval. Uh, Victoria hosted the match, um, believe it or not, and me, Sam and Ethan also went out to that match. It was a great day. We went out to day four and saw the Victorian, a very depleted Victorian side um, hang on for an important draw and a, a massive draw considering who they were coming up against, uh, coming up against a very strong New South Wales side. Uh, New South Wales, uh, oh, sorry, Victoria um, batted first, scored 190 a great bowling performance by the New South Wales Blues. New South Wales then put on 364. And there was a bit of rain delays here and there. Uh, so they didn't, in fact, get a full four days play worth. Uh, which meant it was going to take something special for New South Wales to win the match. Uh, but putting on 364, uh, they only had to bowl Victoria out for less than 200, and they couldn't do that, uh, thanks to Pete Hanscom um, and a few of the other Victorian uh, batsmen who hung in on day four, um, finishing the day four for 270, and the match was declared a draw. Uh, it was quite a boring day's day for cricket. Um, if you're not a true domestic cricketer, you would think, yeah, why would you go to that match? But being there at the ground, you saw the grit and determination the Victorian boys displayed. And a draw is almost like a win for them against this New South Wales team, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, yeah, that they Victoria had a successful campaign in Sydney. Uh, they won the first match, unbelievably, as we all know, at the SCG. And then the second match, they came away for a draw. So very successful for a very young and inexperienced Victoria side. And the next match, Western Australia took on South Australia in possibly the Sheffield Shield game of this tournament. I know I've said that a few times, but this truly was an unbelievable match with both bat and ball. It had it all. It was very, oh, sorry, it was extremely good viewing. It was gripping. Um, and it went down to the final ball of the game, which doesn't often happen. But I tell you what, this is why Sheffield Shield is the greatest first-class competition in the world. You have the best players, six states, and you get, you have games going down to the wire quite consistently. Uh, South Australia batted first. Uh, they declared eight down for 510, which was a great start for the Redbacks. Uh, Western Australia uh, chasing fairly large... First innings total declared five for 409. Uh, it was great of them to declare uh, before passing South Australia's total, kept all results in the game. South Australia uh, were restricted 230 for nine when they declared, uh, leaving Western Australia with an unattainable total uh, to chase down on the fourth day. South Australia needing 10 wickets. They fell one wicket short and it was unbelievable viewing. Earlier in the day, uh, Hilton Cartwright, the uh, big Zimbabwean farmer, now playing for Western Australia, had some pretty horrific um, back spasms, uh, which was caught live on the stream. And yeah, it was not good to watch. He was uh, on all fours, down in agony. Uh, he then went on to bat in the fourth innings to save the game for Western Australia. And that he did. Uh, he faced over 120 deliveries, batted like his career depended on it. Uh, it certainly did not have that injury and gave Western Australia the best chance they could in uh, saving the match and that they did. Now, South Australia needed one wicket. It comes down to the final ball and oh, i tell you what, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this delivery uh, from... Chad Sayers, and oh, it was unbelievable. Uh, the ball just popped up. We thought there was going to be uh, a result. Uh, Liam O'Connor batting at 11 for Western Australia had to face out this ball. He did. But I tell you what, Ethan, you were watching it with me. That was just a roller coaster of emotions that last over. Uh, it was gripping viewing, uh, bowled in, top of off. And O'Connor's 
chipped it up and it's just fell short of uh, quite a short point gully. Um, it fell about two metres short of him and that probably would have been the greatest finish to a Shield match this century possibly. It didn't happen, but we're thankful that we got the result we did because both sides showed just the best of their cricketing abilities uh, in this match, ended in a draw, and that match is going to be remembered for a long time to come, I'm sure of that. The next match had Victoria taking on Tasmania as Sheffield Shield returned to the MCG uh, in quite a while. I think 2019 was the last time they hosted a match, and unfortunately this match was also rain-affected, but it was another gripping game when the uh, match was being played. Tasmania were bowled out for 188 in the first innings. Uh, and then they then bowled out Victoria for 199, which I wasn't expecting um, as a Tasmanian supporter. I thought, you know, if we can keep them to under 300, we can, you know, save this game. Uh, barring a mini- miracle, we can win it um, too. And... You know, only trailing by 11, we put on 263 before being bowled out, which gave ourselves um, quite a bit of, uh, a fair few runs to work with over 250 uh, to bowl Victoria out. But unfortunately, rain got in the, in the way and Victoria would have won that match, I'm pretty sure. Uh, one down for 122, they finished on. Uh, so that match was a draw. And unfortunately, Tasmania needed a win in their final three games, and that draw resulted. Uh, uh, that draw meant that they couldn't make the Shield final, which is unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, uh, we've had plenty of ups in this season, although we haven't had a victory yet. We've played some pretty good cricket, I thought. Uh, the match after that, uh, Western Australia batted first, uh, declaring five for 458. Queensland uh, then declared nine for 600. And we all know what the result was going to be. Uh, Western Australia finishing four down for 178. Uh, Queensland didn't get a chance to bat again. Um, and look, this is these are the results we don't want to see in Sheffield Shield. Although we saw some pretty good batting, uh, it was it was a poor bowling wicket at the Gabba. And look, although you can't blame Queensland uh, for not declaring before. Uh, gaining a first innings lead, I think they could have declared just under 500 and made a little bit more of a game of it, uh, but unfortunately they were happy with the draw. Uh, they remained top of the table. And then in the latest match, South Australia took on New South Wales at the Adelaide Oval. New South Wales won that comfortably by six wickets. Uh, South Australia batted first, declaring for 482 for eight. Uh, see, and this is another match South Australia performed well in, but couldn't get over the line. Uh, New South Wales, 7 for 336, they declared in their first innings. Very sporting of them um, to give the game uh, a chance of having a result. And, you know, it worked well for them in the end. Uh, South Australia then declared 6 for 178, uh, giving New South Wales a target of just under 300. And, you know, we thought, well, maybe South Australia can win the game. And... You know, at times you probably thought they deserved to, but to New South Wales' credit, they won comfortably and convincingly in the end uh, with six surrogates in hand, four for 298. And having a look at the Sheffield Shield uh, table, uh, New South Wales are in fact first, uh, I am mistaken. However, they have played an extra match. They've played six matches, won three, drawn two and lost the other 28.31 points. Queensland played five, drawn one, lost one and won three. 28.14 28.14 points, not much in, it's 0.78 points. Do you reckon New South Wales can manage to come first and host the Shield final, even? Yeah, if the way that we're going right now, I reckon we can just stay and hold the top. Yeah, well, certainly you should be able to with the uh, likes of Steve Smith and Warner. Obviously, Smith Smith's injured at the moment, but you've got the whole Australian bowling lineup at your disposal. Um, in third place, Western Australia. One win, five draws, no losses. That's, it's quite unbelievable, five draws in the season, considering you've only played six. Uh, that brings their total points to 19.7. Now, I think the Shield final is almost locked in, New South Wales, Queensland, unless one of those sides really has a form slump and Western Australia or Victoria 
for that matter, could sneak in. Victoria, fourth placed, played five, won one game and drawn the four others, 17.38 points. And then we move to Tasmania and South Australia, who are often at the, find themselves at the bottom of the table. But I don't think this reflects how well they've played the latter half of this season um, outside of the COVID Adelaide bubble. Uh, Tasmania in fifth, drawn three, lost three, 12.43 points. And South Australia have drawn three and lost three as well, uh, 9.21 points. And that uh, that brings a close to the results of the Marsh Cup and the Marsh Shepherd Shield uh, that we've missed out on. Um, it's going to be a thrilling uh, end to the season. We'll have weekly episodes guiding you through it all. Um, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to it. I think this could be one of the great finishes to the domestic uh, summer we've had in quite some time. Uh, I have the feeling that Western Australia or Victoria may sneak in um, and really challenge Queensland and New South Wales for a top two spot and uh, make the Shield final. I'm hoping for that, and I get the feeling one of them may. I don't think the she- Sheffield Shield uh, has been wrapped up yet, as although it does look like it. In the Marsh Cup, we're in for a thrilling finish. WA, uh, if they win their next two matches, they give themselves the slightest of chances to make the top two. Both those matches are against Victoria and Tasmania at the Wacker. And then you've got New South Wales who are undefeated as well as Queensland. And we've got a big clash between them coming up the last day of March at North Sydney Oval with Day Nighter, which could feature Steve Smith taking on Marnus Slubbershane. This is, and then you've also got New South Wales playing Queensland in the Sheffield Shield at North Dalton Park in Wollongong. Both those matches, uh, the domestic cricketers will be attending. And I think that both those matches will determine who hosts the Shield and One Day Cup finals respectively. Um, so we've got a thrilling finish to both competitions. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have here at V Domestic Cricketers. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, we'll have more weekly episodes coming up soon. Uh, keep an eye on all our social media channels. Uh, we've got great stuff coming up. And yeah, thanks for joining us.